Ricardo Salinas, founder, chairman of the Salinas Group. So nice to see you at the Aspen Ideas Festival. Thank you, Rhonda. Pleasure. Let's start with something you wrote recently. You have a very popular blog, and you wrote about political reform in Mexico, and you basically said recent reforms have made things worse. What would you like to see right now on that front? Well, the key issue is that uh, the citizens have been disempowered, and the whole electoral system is run by the parties, for the parties, <laughs> that's the, the only beneficiaries. We have a name for them, Partidocracia. It's created a huge discontent. And, and on top of all this, just to give you some ideas, they stole three minutes of airtime on all television stations, radio stations, across the country, and delivered a deluge, 40 million spots, 30 second spots, on us in a period of three months. So people are just fed up with political parties. And the upshot of this is a phenomenon that we saw in uh, the state of Nuevo León, where an independent candidate with no access to radio and TV won two to one. So that, that's a clear vote by the citizens. So what we need to do is get citizens more involved and political parties uh, sidelined from the electoral process. It's one thing that they're participants, but they cannot be the arbiter also. Is it hurting growth and development in Mexico? Is it a roadblock for business and industry? Well, I mean, a, a politically stable climate is very important mm -hmm. because investments necessarily uh, have a, a long-term view. And if, if there's political uncertainty, like in Venezuela or in Argentina, investments don't come. We know very well that the only way to grow is through investments, productive investments that generate uh, better paying jobs, more productivity, uh, through investment in education. That, that's the thing that really gets a country going. So uh, in the measure that we can get a better political climate, we'll do better. I mean, it's not that it's bad, but it could be much better. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, a couple of U.S. companies, AT&T, Constellation Brands, recently making some big investments in Mexico. So that's obviously encouraging. Is that a story of Mexico standing out on its own or Mexico being the strongest in Latin America? Well, um, I think Mexico is, is, is in a very good position in, in worldwide because of this partnership between the, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico through NAFTA. And... Um, uh, the, the, the composition of its uh, population, that's 120 million people, uh, 53 million of them are in the labor force. So it's a very young country and, and it has a lot more to give. Now I'm very happy about the AT&T situation because we had a lot to do in that. That's we right. sold our, our cellular company, which was a third uh, place operator, and AT&T has upped its investment up to $7 billion. So they're going to be a real challenge to the established uh, uh, dominant player. And uh, that's going to be real good for competition. You're real good for consumers. That's what Mexico needs, more competition so consumers get a better offer. What industry in Mexico has the best growth potential in your view over the next couple of years? Well, we have this peculiar situation of the oil and gas energy reform, where it used to be a government-run monopoly and that only the government company could access. So now with the, the reform, it becomes an open sector, and um, companies, uh, private companies from Mexico and outside the world will be allowed to bid on exploration licenses. So that, of course, is a, is a huge uh, sector, even though now it's depressed, but, but, I mean, the, the, the money that you need to play in oil and gas is huge. So I would put that up way up at number one. But all kinds of consumer goods, you know, brands. Uh, we have very significant beer brands, um, food, services. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very large economy. As a businessman, what worries you in terms of that growth and making sure profitability is sustained? Well, I think our tax policy could be much better. Uh, unfortunately, um, some people in the government think that the more money the government has, the better it's going to get. And it's usually not like that. Uh, what happens if you take money from the private sector, that's money that is not invested, that doesn't create productivity, doesn't create jobs, doesn't create high paying jobs. And if you put that money in the public sector, usually you get low-paying bureaucrats that continue to obstacle, put obstacles in everybody's way by over-regulating, 
over controlling and just doing the stupid spending. You know, this is the nature of the government beast. That's what it is. Ricardo Salinas, it's been great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.